Okay. Now, I would like to show you um, the last topic of this um, of this chapter, which is Newton's method. And then on Wednesday, nothing new. We're just going to back, go back and review. And then Monday, nothing new. We're going to go back and review. Okay. Good. So the last section that we have that is covered by this test is 4.8. It's called Newton's Method. Bear with me. You don't have to write anything for a moment or two or three. So um, let me show you how from now on you will be able to solve any equation any equation to any level of, of exactness as you want any equation that you will normally you will never be able to solve like for example uh, sine x equals x or just anything you can think of. From starting from after we talked about the Newton's method, you will be able to solve any equation that comes along. But you have to use calculus to solve it. Okay? So we're going to call, so first of all, I'm going to just say uh, this is my equation, or this or this is the same thing. And I'm going to call this f of x. So then I'm solving the equation f of x equals 0. And let's suppose it has a root r or a solution. We're going to call it root. The root or the solution of f of x equals 0. And now here is a super ingenious method, in my opinion. I don't know what r is or the root is, but I'm going to say is between these two. Let's say between 9 and 10. Because I can always determine a one unit interval where the solution is. How do I do that? Always determine a one unit interval? Yes, where the solution the is. Value. Thank you very much. So using the intermediate value Theorem, yes, uh, find the interval. Good. So I'm going to say that the solution is somewhere here. This is my R. I know it's there, but I cannot determine it with the intermediate value theorem because as we talked about it a long time ago, the intermediate value theorem just tells us where the solution is but it doesn't give us a solution. <coughs> Newton's method will. Okay, so let's suppose the function looks like this. And this is my f of x. And I know that it crosses the x-axis at that point. That is the x-intercept or the root uh, or uh, the solution of the equation. Okay. I have to start I have to use a starting point. And you can say, use uh, starting point 9, or use starting point 10. Of course, you're not going to start here at 50. So you're going to pick an initial value to start with. So I pick x0. It can be 9, it can be 10, one or the other. OK, so assuming that this is my x0, the initial value, I pick this point. Then, can anyone give us the coordinates of this point? Very good. Indeed, x0 comma f of x0. We agree. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to draw a tangent. So this is the tangent at P. I extend it, and you will hit 
the x-axis in this point. Can anyone give us the coordinates of this point? And the answer is no. But I can call it x1, comma, 0. I can give it any name I want. And I know it's on the y on the x-axis, so that y has to be 0. Very good. Can anyone give us the um, slope of this uh, line? F prime of x is, uh, Do you uh, agree that it's f prime of x0? Yes? Because it's at p, and the slope at p will be m f prime of x0. Okay, good. So I have two points in the slope. I have this point, which is x0, comma f of x0. I have this point, which is x1, comma 0. And I have the slope of the line, which is f prime of x0, correct? Good. So then I know for now that f prime of x0 is the slope. But this slope, having two points, can be determined in a different way. How do I determine the slope of this line? Not considering calculus now for a moment. Can anyone give us what to write? Uh, zero. Zero minus. Yeah, zero minus uh, f, of f of x zero over x one. Excellent. So now forget about this symbol here. I have an equation in which what do you think I'm going to solve for? x1. I started with x0, but you can say, but x0 is such a horrible approximation of r, and I would have to agree. But I got x1. Would you say that x1 is a better approximation of r than x0 was? Okay, so let's solve this for x1. x1 is called the first iteration of the method. So I will cross multiply. I have x1 minus x0 times f prime of x0 equals 0 minus, so it's negative f of x0. I will divide by this now. x1 minus x0 equals negative f of x0 over f prime of x0. And in order to find x1, I will write. This could be a big problem if, look at the expression and say if, that would be a catastrophe. If this happens, then you cannot continue. If f prime of x is equal to zero. Right, I have to be very careful. I cannot pick my initial value if f prime is zero, because I'll never get anywhere. This will not exist. I will not be able to find x1. Okay. Stay with me. Okay, now I have this point, and I continue in the same way. I go up vertically, and I determine point Q, and then I will draw a tangent, and I will get another point very close to R, which I will call x2, comma 0. And I know that this point Q